Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. It's time! We're back for Lord of the Gimmicks. Nax is over, for the most part. Aside from some of the heroic stuff that I might do on a stream, I'm still thinking about it. Do I want to do it? Do I not want to do it? I, I can tell you that I would not want to do it as a YouTube video, because apparently a lot of that stuff, especially later on, very, very random. Or at least very dependent on draw. So you can end up having hundreds of failures. Probably not the most dynamic viewing uh, as an actual video series, but maybe a stream, certainly. Who knows? Anyway, back to the gimmick. So, Naxxramas has allowed for a number of interesting changes to both existing gimmick decks, as well as the creation of new ones. And of course, the most obvious one is the Death Rattle gimmick. I mean, this expansion added so many cards that either have Death Rattle or interact with Death Rattle in some way. That's the main theme of Naxrama. So I was able to create several Death Rattle decks. I tested a Druid Death Rattle deck that used Poison Seeds and Soul of the Forest and things like that. Not massively successful, I've got to admit. And I've been sort of going through the classes. My wife created a Mage Death Rattle deck, more of a kind of aggro deck. But the one that I came up with that I like the most and has actually taken me quite far in the rankings already, and I'm interested to know how far it will go, is this Death Rattle Warlock deck, which I do need to rename. I don't like that. You know, I think I think we should call it Death Clock. There we go. This is the gimmick here is that everything either interacts with Death Rattle or is Death Rattle. So let me demonstrate to you what I mean by that. It starts off with power overwhelming, and you might say, well, that's not a death rattle. Yes, but it does force a death. It's key. Yeah? This is a key component of the deck itself, because triggering death rattles suddenly becomes something that you have direct control over, as opposed to your opponent having control over. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to play around. You can do all manner of crazy things with this. I've used this to detonate my own abomination to do AoE damage after using the abomination to take out a key target on the other side, or weaken something to have it finished off and then trigger Nerubian eggs and all sorts of things like that. So power overwhelming is key, and it also unlocks a combo with the Void Terror, as you can see down here. This is another creature that can force Death Rattles to be triggered. This, again, is fantastically useful in a wide variety of scenarios, but rather than just using Power Overwhelming, which is a nice cheap option, it only takes one mana, which means it's easier to combo. This costs three, but it can generate a very powerful creature. You use things like Power Overwhelming on something, you then use the Void Terror to pop it before the Power Overwhelming kills it, which means that you eat the inflated stats. Very, very useful. Now, it's got some pretty decent aggro out of the gate. It's got the Lepinome, it's got the Zombie Chow, and it has the Undertaker all at one mana. So the ideal opening play in most scenarios is Undertaker Coin Zombie Chow. Because that gives you two, two, three creatures on the board in turn one, which is very hard to deal with. Zombie Chow is not so good later on, for obvious reasons. You don't really want to be playing Zombie Chow later in the game when your opponent's taking damage, because it's easy to kill, and it's a nice little heal. If you get it out early, Zombie Chow is fantastic. Really good. Uh, it's one mana cheaper than that really has any right to be. And if the hero has taken no damage, then the zombie chow is going to always trade well. Fantastic. Now, add that into Undertaker, you're great. Then maybe turn two, you drop either the Egg or the Loot Hoarder, or maybe you just have a Lepinome. Your Undertaker is suddenly a 3-4, then a 4-5, and so on and so forth. Things can really start to steamroll from there. So it's got a nice little bit of aggro component in there. In fact, you might argue that looks a lot like Zoo. It kind of does. Now, it's got some of the elements of Zoo, but it has a lot more interesting combo potential. So here's a Loot Hoarder. For obvious reasons, you need a little bit of draw here. What I found with the Druid deck when I tried to run a very similar setup to this is that it doesn't have enough draw in it. Eh? You would have to artificially add draw in order to make it work, and that kind of compromises the gimmick, because instead of having things like, say, Void Terrors and Power Overwhelmings, I was taking things like Soul of the Forest and Poison Seeds, so I didn't have space for any more card draw outside of the Loot Hoarder, and frankly, that's just not good enough. So, with the Loot Hoarder plus the Warlock hero power, it actually works out very well, and you usually have a pretty good hand. Nerubian Egg, uh, that's a very obvious one. There's a number of nice combos to get this working. Sometimes you dump down the egg and nothing happens, but once you get an Abomination out, you pretty much guarantee the egg will hatch. You've also got Void Terror to do the same thing, so you can gain an extra... It's not ideal to Void Terror this, because it doesn't have a very good stat line, so it gets you a 3-5, which is still okay, you know? A 3-5 for 3 is good value, but you only have two of these Void Terrors, so you really want to save them for 
something a little bit more dramatic. The ideal combo is you go Power Overwhelming to make the Nerubian Egg fight, you fight, you trade without killing the egg, and then you Void Terror it. And that ends up being fantastic. But there are various ways to trigger the egg in this deck. Not a huge number of them, but a decent number. Dancing Swords, very obvious one. Your opponent draws a card. Really the only time that's actually a problem is if you have Rivendare out. So it ends up drawing two cards. That can be a bit of a bind. And you'll notice that Rivendare is obviously key to this deck, but it also has problems because some of these death rattles are very good for the enemy, such as Dancing Swords, Death Lord. If this is out, I would never play Rivendare. There's too many risks. I've done it before and I've had it pull a Ragnaros onto the field along with like a Yeti. I'm like, oh, he suddenly has a Rag and a Yeti. I'm probably dead now. Now. So there are times when you don't want to play Rivendell. You've got to be a bit careful about that. And pl having Rivendell on the board sort of denies you the ability to play Death Lord unless you know you're super safe from having that Death Lord blown up. And also it makes things like Dancing Swords a bit more painful because if your opponent draws two cards, that extra value you've got from a 4-4 four, four for three is maybe not as good anymore. I don't really care if the opponent draws one card. It's not a big deal. But two, that's where you start to get into dangerous territory. Then, of course, you have the Harvest Golem. Uh, that's always been a good creature. It still is. It's even better if you combo it with things like Rivendare to get double harvest golems. Always nice to fill your board up with these things. They're nice sticky minions. If you can get that out in turn two or turn three, that's amazing. And of course, we did mention the Death Lord. The Death Lord is beastly. That stat line for that price is insane, especially with Taunt. But the downside is very random. Extremely random. Uh, even if they get a small minion, that's still pretty much worth for them. If they get a big minion, you can just die. Uh, I have had this pull rag on turn four for my enemy. I did beat him, but it was a struggle, a real struggle. And, you know, if a rag's suddenly on the board, you're in a lot of trouble. That rag's always going to trade well. And if that rag was free, even bloody well better. Void Terrors were mentioned, Baron Rivendare, of course, you know, very key to that. Being able to trigger Death Rattles twice is key to many things, although it does have its downsides. Then, of course, the Abomination, which is just a strong creature in general. It's good to stop the deck from and the board from being out flooded it's absolutely fantastic against things like zoo and just weenie decks in general token decks and of course it can trigger your own death rattles so it's ideal and then of course you have the sludge belcher in there as well which is the the slightly less aggressive version of the abomination this works really well i mean it's just a good card in general it's a very sticky taunt that's hard to get off the board and if you've got rivendare down it's even harder so there's no reason not to have this and of course you have some legendaries around here as well you've got fugan and starlick I find it fairly rare in my games that these will ever summon Thaddeus. I've maybe had Thaddeus summoned twice, three times in maybe 30 games with this, but it's still good. I mean, Fugan has an excellent stat line for his price. He also is a bit of a silence magnet because people are terrified of the possibility of Thaddeus, even though more often than not, you don't have both Fugan and Stalag anyway, because, you know, it's two cards on a 30 card deck. It's very likely that you won't get one or the other, but it's a great silence magnet, which is awesome because I'd prefer that they silence Fugan as opposed to silence Cairn or Sylvanas or Kel'Thuzad. And let's talk about those for a minute before we actually go into the games. Cairn is a very obvious one. It synergizes incredibly well with Baron Rivendare because you can get two Bane Blood Hoofs out of it. Even if you couldn't, it's still just a good card in general. Sylvanas Windrunner, also a very good card, made even better by the fact that you have Power Overwhelming and Void Terror, so you can trigger it yourself. Yeah, and I've done that before. And if you combo that with Rivendare, you can basically mind control two creatures, which is almost game-ending in some scenarios. And then, of course, last but by no means least kind of completes the deck in terms of theme. It's maybe a bit out there for the theme. You could maybe argue that Kel'Thuzad shouldn't be in the deck to actually stick with the gimmick, but I believe otherwise on the basis that this allows for more death rattles to go off. Yeah? This is a deck where you can blow up your own side and then with Kel'Thuzad resummon it and keep fighting. Com combined with Rivendare, this is a beast of a card. There's no doubt it can do all sorts of wonderful things. So there you go. That is what I call Death Clock now, and this actually got me up to rank... 14. Currently, this deck has a 90% win rate. I do not anticipate that to remain that way. It is far too gimmicky, combo-reliant things to do that, but hopefully you'll have fun watching it. So, let's go. All right, here we go. Let's see how it does on ladder. So, it's actually taking me up to about rank 14, as you can see right here. Not too bad. Super run into any problems, though. There's a few decks that have done really, really well against it. The Freeze Mage kind of control, if they get the right cards, can really shut it down quite hard. And I've also run into problems with Murloc decks. I guess you don't really see too many of those anymore, but there's a few nasty little variants that can really beat you down very badly if they have, have the right kind of opening. So we'll see how it goes. 
And I wonder if this is a Miracle Rogue, Backspace Rogue, or some other weird rogue that I haven't seen yet in the meta. It's all certainly possible. Okay, well, these cards look great in theory, but I don't have anything to really combo them with, and Fugit isn't really ideal either. We don't want a five drop, so I think we're going to toss these, keep the Dancing Swords, because it's a three, and see if we get a better one. Ideally, we want probably Undertaker, Zombie, Chow, but we're not getting it. We can, we can coin Loot Hoarder. It's not a great play simply because this is a rogue we're up against here. So I think what we'll probably do is zombie chow and then coin dancing swords on turn two. We've got two really strong taunts here, so this is always nice. If I need taunt against a lot of aggro, I can use sludge belcher instead of abomination, depending on what he has. Yeah. It's nice. To, it's always nice to have that kind of choice. All right, Thalnos comes out and... Oh, well, there you go. Very nice. But... It's not the worst thing to ever happen. It doesn't even heal, so we're not really that concerned about that. Although, Dancing Swords now could be a risk as a result of him having this out. If he has another Backstab or if he has an Eviscerate, then I'm going to lose my Dancing Swords. He's going to get a card and he'll be ahead. Uh, will he be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's possible. He'd certainly be in a decent spot, though. Does he have any more spells? I guess he doesn't. I mean, he might. But yeah, looks like we're we're gonna get something out of this. Good. That's what I like to see. I'll probably uh, do. I want to throw the full four at the face. I don't want to get rid of Thalnos. Ooh, a Death Lord. I will throw the. This is still a bit risky. The thing is, if he pulls an Eviscerate, it doesn't matter if this spell power is up. He's probably going to be able to combo it. So I'm just going to go up with the face and see where we go from there. That's my logic for that. I don't really like wasting four damage on a one damage target, particularly when it gets some spe uh, death rattle draw a card, but it is spell power. And we've seen how nasty spell power can be in the hands of a rogue, so we'll probably kill it with the Death Lord next turn. And hope that he doesn't have anything too unpleasant available. I mean, he won't, he won't be able to kill the Death Lord this turn. There's no way. Not on four mana. It's, it's too tough. There's a three drop. It seems very unlikely. It's not like he could even assassinate it or anything, and chances are he probably doesn't have an assassinate in anyway. Okay, Cold Blood, which is going to take it up to a... That's only, I mean, that was an uncomboed Cold Blood. And a Betrayal. Oh, wow, did... That is really clever. He's actually going to make this work. So he's going to get a card out of this, which is very annoying. And more to the point, he's... Well, no, he's going to get a... Not, not just that, he's going to get a minion, which is a Shade of Naxxramas. That could be quite irritating. Okay, well that was a good turn for him. I do have another Death Lord, and I will play it, because the chances are he can't deal with another Death Lord. He had what he needed there, but this shade could be a bit of a problem, though. If it stays on the board for too long, it's going to be hard to deal with. I hope to pull something like the Sylvanas Power Overwhelming combo to steal it or something, but for the time being, we can keep beating on him. So he's already used the Betrayal. It's actually, it's very... I mean, the meta's obviously a bit weird now, because... Naxxramas is now fully out, so I'm encountering a lot of decks I haven't really seen before. But I don't generally see decks with Betrayal and Shade of Naxxramas in them. It's it's a bit of a weird one. You don't expect that. So I suppose we can't really predict anything up to this point. All right, we might have to trade the Dancing Swords into the 4-4, which is going to give him a card advantage. I don't really like that too much. But I don't want to leave that up there because it gives him the opportunity to take the Death Lord. Fugan is a decent bet here. I don't need another taunt, really, so I'm just going to go straight for the Fugan, and fine, he can he can have a card. But yeah, I didn't want to leave it so that he could kill this Death Lord without consequence and get another free creature, so... He gets Fugan on the board, which is nice. I still have two Loot Hoarders, I probably want to throw them out next turn. Obviously, this is probably just going to... Uh, no, he's going to backstab it. Can he actually kill it? He thinks he can. Is, is that his other Eviscerate? No, he has an SI7. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. Fugan can kill the Shade of Naxxramas. Oh, no! You can't be serious. Well, the Shade of Naxxramas isn't going to die now because he randomed Leroy Jenkins. And there we see the reason why the Death Lord can be pretty bad. It's, it's not awful. We can still make this work, but... He's burning a lot of cards to kill this Fugan. But he is he's also cycling through his deck very quickly. And this is not... If it was Miracle, obviously Leroy has now been used, so it's pretty much useless. But killing this is going to be hard, because it is going to gain plus one, plus one. Otherwise, I would just pull the Abomination. I'm hoping for 
Yeah, I think I actually will need Abomination, Power Overwhelming, and I don't have it. So, that's a bit of a problem. I'm going to take some severe damage. I'm thinking Sludge Belcher. Yeah, if he's run out of ways to do damage, Sludge Belcher will actually stop the Shaded Naxxramas because he doesn't have enough to get through it. So, we're going to play Sludge Belcher. The Abomination wouldn't do anything because he's going to get out of range of it. And then he'd just pop it with that and then just attack the face for nine. So, Sludge Belcher, I think, is a better play here. This is still a nasty situation, obviously, but I've got a bit of a better shot. The problem is this is gaining a lot of power and I don't have a way to get rid of it. Hoping for Sylvanas Power Overwhelming Combo, Abomination Power Overwhelming Combo, the kind of thing that might work. Let's see if he's got another piece of removal. I don't think he does. He might be out. Oh, there's his Deadly Poison. So now he still doesn't have enough to get through it without throwing his shade at it, unless he has something else. Blade Flurry? No. No, he wouldn't do that. Okay, so we've at least successfully protected ourselves, unless he has something else. Does he have Blade Flurry? No, he doesn't. Good. Okay, so I've held that off for the time being, but I'm still in the same situation. Not a brilliant Edwin, but not a terrible one. Uh, the, none of these are helpful, I'm afraid. None of these are helpful. This is... The Shade will survive, and I'm going to take 10. This is going to suck. But I will get an Arubian Egg out of it, so... We'll do what we can. Such a weird situation. I don't see Shade that often. As you can see, Shade can be quite nasty. I'm just like, I'm always one health away from killing it. I wonder if he's got one damage to kill the Nerubian. Fan of knives. Okay. Alright, so he wants to avoid... He's probably going to trade the Edwin into it then. Oh, he's sapping it. Oh, no. Okay. He is going through his deck pretty fast, but... I might be dead before it even matters. He is about to hit me for millions of points of damage. Abomination might work. As long as he doesn't have another sap, I should stay alive, but I'm taking severe damage. So I think we just play the same combination. Abomination, Nerubian Egg, unless I get something better. If I do get... Nah, damn. I was hoping for Power Overwhelming, because I could actually blow his board up. Is Abomination still good enough, though? Yeah, it really is. Unless he has an ability, something which will get, let him gain health on that, and that's his board wiped, so that seems safe. What are the chances he's got a way of healing that? I don't know what this deck is, so it's difficult to say. Oh, no, he has the other sap, and GG. Can't believe he had the other sap. Oh, he had half his deck left. What were the chances? Hmm. Well, that sucked. The Death Lords uh, did a good job for him there. That sucked because it was a good start, but... Too much roguey bullshit. Just the right cards at just the right time. Couldn't do much. Damn. And that shade was always just, just one away. Which is the worst thing about that. Well, that was not a great start. Paladin. Okay. We'll see where this goes. Death Lord and a Ruby and Egg. I mean, the egg sounds good, but if you don't have a way to reliably pop it early on, it's maybe best to toss it. Probably better off with some lower stuff. Oh, we get the Lepinum. It's okay. And a Fugan. Which, I don't con I don't complain about Fugan because it's a good stat line. Okay, so Lepinum, tap, Death Lord is probably the first three turns. We'll see. I mean, ideally, I pull an Undertaker now and then just play Lepinome turn two. Which is a much better setup. I got Zombie Chow. I'm going to play Zombie Chow. Zombie Chow turn one always seems like the right call, regardless of what you have. It's the best time to play Zombie Chow. And then we've got Lepinome and Death Lord. And he plays nothing. Okay, cool. Yep, Lepinome it will be. And then face... Of course, annoyingly, all this damage that I'm kind of doing with Zombie Chow is going to be rendered meaningless unless it gets a good trade. That's the that's the nasty part of Zombie Chow. But, you know, this is going to be pretty good. Zombie Chow is going to eat up this recruit without too much of a problem. And then we can Death Lord. And I think we will. 
you know, we've got four damage behind the Death Lord, and we can put the Dancing Swords behind there. We have Stalag and Fugit in the hand. So, I mean, I'd say we do have a potential turn six Thaddeus if I get the right combo. It's unlikely to happen, though. I'm going to play that. There we go. And I think we'll just deal with it with that. I would l I don't know. If he ends up with a Consecrate, it's not going to matter, is it? And I'd rather have this at maximum health, I think. So, yeah. If he has a Consecrate this turn, then he gets healed, which sucks. But I wonder what he's building up to here. He has nine cards in his hand. Oh, it's a giant deck. That's very interesting. Okay. And infuriating. And that Sylvanas would be very nice right now. But okay, well, um, I basically have to run a decent part of my deck into that. Which is pretty annoying. That's going to trade three to one. Or I ignore it. But if I ignore it, he kills the Death Lord and gets a free creature, which doesn't seem worthwhile at all. Probably play Stalig. Yeah, and I think we just have to trade. Which is, a, which is not good. I mean, no, nobody wants this. Nobody, but... It's a Mountain Giant on turn four. I mean, what am I doing? I have never played against a Paladin deck that used Mountain Giants before. Sea Giant, yes, absolutely. That makes sense, considering the ability there. But outside of that, no. It's a bit weird. Okay, well... This is just fine, really. Do I want to? Do I want to just trade Starlig into it, and then play Fugin? I'd rather play Fugin. I don't know. I think it's probably best to play Sylvanas. Trade that. Play Sylvanas. I'd rather play Fugin when I have Power of Whelming or Void Terror, so I know I can trigger it before he's able to silence it. So, yeah, I think we're happy to do that, and then we'll play Sylvanas. So we'll see what comes of that. So he has a massive card advantage, like seven card advantage. It's kind of silly, but we have a decent board. Let's see if he has an answer to it. He does. Equality followed by Consecrate, I assume. Oh, hang on a minute. We might steal it. I think we steal it here, right? Yeah, because the Death Lord's got a trigger first. And we get a 4-1 Twilight Drake. Maybe not the best value ever, but it is. It's a creature. You know, we got something out of that. And if he'd actually drawn that, then that would have been a very powerful creature. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird situation, but there you go. I think, do we Death Lord Loot Hoarder here? I think we do. Just to try and protect that. And you know what, we'll play the other one too. I need the draw anyway. And if he doesn't have a way to handle this, maybe he has a, he's probably got Consecrate. I don't know, he just, he just used one of them. What's the chance he's got the other one with 17 more cards in his deck? Not too high. Sword of Justice, followed by Harvest Gone. All right, he doesn't have it. That's good. Baron Rivendell would be lovely right about now. Void Terror. All right, cool. We have the Fugan combo. Fantastic. So we can make that work. And we'll trade two of those into that, and then blah, blah, blah. Yep, you get the idea. Okay. Fabulous. So not only does that get us the Thaddeus, it gets us a very fat Void Terror. Don't want to trade the 4-1 into it? Nah, I think I'd rather trade the uh, the, the two, because I'm, I'm out of cards, so... Yep, there we go. I'm going to eat that. That gets us a Thaddeus, and it gets us a fat 710 Void Terror. So he is hoping he doesn't have another equality combo. If he does, I'm in big trouble. Oh, Kel'Thuzad. Oh my, if I can survive this turn. I actually should have killed that. I don't know why I didn't. Okay. If I can survive this turn, then things are going to get really interesting. The question is, does he have the combo? Does he have a quality, either a quality wild pyromancer, or, well, yeah, okay, he doesn't have it then. That sucks, that sucks, that's really horrible, ah. I keep the 710 Void Terror though, and I do have Kel'Thuzad, so that's not too bad. But I'm still dealing with just these horrendously nasty minions, but it's fine. Again, I have Kel'Thuzad, I can survive that. I think, unless he has something else. There's no way he's a qualitying and wild pyromancering in this position. No way he kill his own board. He wouldn't do that. Okay. All right. So he's burned his sword of justice out, and okay. Fair enough then. <laughs> I suppose he was pretty low on health. I guess he had no answer. That's a shame. I wanted to get Kelthazad out, but that was an interesting game. That was pretty entertaining and strange. The whole Death Lord and Sylvanas dying. 
summoning a minion and then instantly stealing it. That could go really wrong for people. I'm going to consider that in future because getting rid of the Death Lord without using something like that is quite tricky. Against a Paladin, it's a very good combo because it shuts down a quality really hard. Uh, you don't want to give Sylvanas a potentially the best minion in your deck. But it is also a little bit random. I would be careful about the order as well, don't I? I would always have to put Sylvanas to the right of the Death Lord, I believe. Because first minion dies triggers first. Unless there's... I don't know, some of the rules are a little bit weird and archaic, so... It's hard to say. Okay, do I... I think we want to keep this because we have the Nerubian egg combo. It's not brilliant, but it's not terrible either. I'd love an Undertaker here. I mean, the other opportunity... The other possibility is I toss these three and try for Undertaker Zombie Chow. Which is good. Hmm. But I have a guaranteed way of killing the Ruby and Egg. So, maybe not. We'll stick with it. It's a pretty good hand, I think. Not that I can do- not that I can really do much with a coin in it, though. Unless I want to coin out a Death Lord. There's a Mana Worm. I guess we'll play- oh, there's the Undertaker. Okay, so we actually do have the combo. Cool. Yep, this is solid. It's a strong opening. Of course, could be shut down by good arcane missiles. You'll probably want to kill our Undertaker quickly before it gets too beefy. I've seen some people throw some insane crap at Undertakers just because they can snowball really hard. I guess there's probably a variant in a sort of Zulok aggro deck that has an Undertaker in it that just snowballs really hard in the early game from a bunch of one and two drops, but I don't know. Like, if I have the opportunity to play this combo, I pretty much always do, because who can argue with two two threes on turn one? That's really good. Trades with almost everything, with the exception, of course, of this crap. But it's fine, I can I can actually dunk that thing next to it. Here's the arcane missiles. Miss, miss, miss. No! Damn it. Ah. Uh, it was so close. Well, it was statistically likely to hit at least once. That was the only answer, I believe. The only one that actually works. Okay, well, we can kill that, but then... I mean, he just fire blasts it, but that's actually okay, really. Because he hasn't taken any damage to the face, so... I don't mind if he does that. It's not going to help him. And then we have Void Terror, if we want to do the turn 3. I think the turn 3 is good. Like, it's a 3-5 plus a 4-4 four, four on turn 3. It's not the most... Amazing thing ever, but it's two fairly strong minions that are hard to get rid of at least at that stage of the game So I think this is worth What would be nice if is if I could well, I mean I don't have the mana for the power of overwhelming combo The other thing I can do is death lord, but that is absolutely pointless I'm just gonna run this into this because otherwise it's just gonna fire blast it next turn So we're just gonna go with the void terror combo. I think it's strong. I don't see why not There we go I mean, you can't argue with that, really, can you? It's pretty good. 4-4 four, four and a 3-5. It's not too bad. I mean, it's really, if you think about it, a two-card kind of five-mana combination, but it's still good. At least in my opinion. I mean, think about what else you would get for that. You can get a 4-4 four, four and a 2-2 two, two for five-mana with the Silverhand Knight, and this is better, so why not? Okay, right. He's got one of these annoying bastards out on the board, so Death Lord is probably going to be the way to go. And I'm even thinking still... I think now just play the other zombie chow, because he still hasn't taken any face damage. How do we... Do we want to just kill it? I mean, we take three damage on each, and then he picks off that. I think we probably just leave the water elemental alive and allow it to be tanked. We remove this. I can do seven to the face. I don't want to put him in a situation where he can kill the Death Lord immediately without investing something pretty heavy to do it. So... I suppose we just do that. Or we just leave the two one alive, but again, same problem. It's, it does the same amount of damage, so... Well, he doesn't have any AoE yet. Minimum, he's gonna get turn six Blizzard, but he's probably waiting for turn seven Flame Strike. So I, I have a couple of turns to play with before he does something insane. Let's see if he has an answer. If he's got a Fireball, then he can get rid of my Death Lord. He does, okay. So, he's just hoping he doesn't draw anything spectacular out of it. Uh, Azure Drake without the card is not that brilliant, so you know what, I'll take that. And we can kill it very easily with the Nerubian, so things have gone well.
And we haven't done any damage to the face, so I think we just trade the board to kill it, and then... We actually don't have that much to play after that. I'm tempted just to life tap. I don't really want to play the Leper Gnomes. But I think this is clearly the way to go. I'm trying to think, was that suboptimal? Would it have been better to trade it? The, it wouldn't have been. Yes, it would have been. No. No, sorry. The Nerubian was already damaged. It was going to die regardless, so that yeah, it was fine. All right. That's fine. You know, that's a good trade for Zombie Chow because it doesn't get the heal off, so it's fine. I think we'll tap. Power Overwhelming. All right. I'm going to play both. We're going to play both of them. Because that puts some minions on the board. If he plays anything powerful, we've got Power Overwhelming, and we can just hit him with that. And uh, otherwise, we have Ken Blood Hoof, and he can't pick them both off. He can kill one of them, but that limits him to a four drop. He has Tauron Warrior. That's an odd choice. Interesting. I mean, I have seen a couple of mages run it, simply because they can enrage it, and it's reliable. But I'm not 100% convinced by it. Uh, Ken... He's, he's going to enrage it and just kill Ken. Well, kill as in... But I don't really want to use Power Overwhelming here to just kill that. I mean, that's a bad use of it. It's a 3-drop, and it's not a good one either. The alternative is I play Abomination. Then he enrages it and he kills that and he kills that. Which leaves him with like a one card advantage, I think. Ha. Huh. Uh, yeah. I actually don't really know what to do there. Do I really want to burn Power Overwhelming to kill that thing? I just don't. But I don't see a scenario where I get a good trade here. I suppose it's just got to be the Abomination, doesn't it? Mm. The alternative is I tap, and then I can't play either of these. I don't know. I... I suppose it's going to be the Abomination. And we'll just run it into that. Just to guarantee that no nonsense happens there. Yeah, whatever whatever's going to happen there was going to be bad. The Tauron Warrior ended up being a great play there, because I just it was one damage short of actually making anything work. That was good for him. Very good. So now he gets a great trade. Free board. 5-1. Run right into that. It was either... I don't know. Maybe Cairn was the right idea. Yeah, I think... I think honestly Cairn was a better play than what I just did there. I've just sacrificed combo potential. And let's be frank. That stuff was going to die anyway. So yeah. Cairn, I think, was the better play. I was somehow blinded to that. And now I've got to play it, and that's probably not going to get anything done. Damn. Hoping for a Void Terror, Power Overwhelming. But I'm not in a good spot. He's got another one! Well, that's a surprise. That's a, a big surprise. And then he pings that one down. And of course it comes back, but still. Mm. I don't know, we'd probably still get a decent trade out of this. It's, I mean, it's Ken. It's hard not to, but... No, we kill the Tauron Warrior, and we maybe even trade for the Archmage, depending on whether or not he has a... Frostbolt in his hand. Or something along those lines. Yeah, that's okay. Dancing Swords. Alright. I don't really want to give him more card draw, but it's a strong minion, so why not? I almost don't want to play Death Lord here, but if I do, he's just going to trade this, so I don't like that. Let's play Death Lord. And we can life tap. He gets a second power overwhelming. All right. Cool. Well, let's try and make some good combos with that. And let's hope he doesn't get anything insane out of the Death Lord. So far, my luck today with Death Lords has not been good, I have to say. Usually it's like, oh, it's a one drop, it's a two drop. It's a no, here, uh, have Leroy Jenkins and all sorts of other great stuff. It's a very big downside to a very good card. The main problem I have with it, I, I suppose, like, on a tournament level, is that it's it's so random. Ow! Oh, God. Should have seen that coming. That is awful. And now I'm left with nothing, basically. I have two Power Overwhelmings and not a damn thing else. And he gets a Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is not a bad little pickup. All right, well, I need... That Sludge Belcher is decent, actually, here. I'm going to play it. I should have tapped first, though. I might have got a better option. I actually got Sylvanas, but I don't think Sylvanas was a good idea here. 
I, I, cause I've got the Sylvanas Power Overwhelming combo. I would prefer to use that in a situation where I know I'm going to get something really good. And a Sorcerer's Apprentice and a, a 4-3 Archmage is not good, really. Not a brilliant target. Not if I want to blow up Sylvanas and spend another card to do it. So I'll hold on to that. Sludge Belcher is a decent answer, but I'm still losing. There's no doubt about that. I'm behind in every respect. Hopefully he just doesn't have a good answer to this. I suppose if he had a Polymorph, he'd have used it by now. But the Sludge Belcher does nicely answer his 4-3 if he has no other way. What's he going to do? So what I'd probably do is trade the 4-3 into the 3-5 and then ping it to finish it off. And then, of course, you've got the 1-2 you still have to deal with. Yeah, I think he's just going to go for it. It doesn't seem like he has an answer in his hand. Which is good, because that probably means he doesn't have a polymorph. i definitely consider polymorphing a slug sludge belcher. It's annoying enough to justify it. It's a tough taunt. It's sticky. Why not? I mean, maybe you save your poly, maybe you don't. But, he, I mean, he still has 14 cards in his deck, so who knows. Is he going to actually pull a spell out? No. So, it's it's kind of a weird enraged deck. It's got a bunch of stuff. Man, he almost didn't attack that. That would have been amazing if he didn't. Okay, uh, this is actually pretty bad. I think I have to tap. If he pulls a spell, I'm probably dead. I have no taunts. And Sylvanas is... It's okay. I have no time for games. We could have gone Nerubian Egg. Uh, if Nerubian Egg is ignored, I can power Overwhelming next turn. But if... I'm dead, actually, aren't I? Yeah, he just enrages. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, he has perfect lethal. Unless he somehow doesn't notice it. So, we will see. Maybe he doesn't notice it, but that is perfect lethal. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Yeah, without a question. He's got to notice it, surely. He's still casting spells and stuff. What is he up to? Did he just draw his polymorph? It's like, you have perfect lethal. Really, you enrage that, you hit me for 8, you then hit me for 3, which is 11, and then 12. I'm dead. But you don't seem to realize that I'm dead. What are you doing? No, no, you, you, you have lethal! What are you doing? Oh, we're just BMing, okay. Really? Is the comeback possible? I think with a misplay like that, maybe. Maybe it is. Like, he's not actually going to kill me this turn. I don't know if I can kill him. I probably can't. But, yeah, that was that was a very, very silly play. I think he's still got me anyway. How? Hmm. Hmm. The Voiter. I'm, I'm still dead, though, right? I mean, the best I can do is hope for a good Sylvanas. I can tap, which takes me down to three, which is I think is too dangerous. Hmm. Oh, my, 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 my. I mean, he might just draw a fireball and kill me, but... <sighs> that would be a one and three shot. Hmm. Okay. I mean, logically, you kill the 3-3, three, three, but you probably want to try and steal it instead, but the chances are too low. It's a one in three shot at getting it. If you don't get it, he notices next turn and kills you. Kill the 3-1. Probably kill the 3-1. Go for the shot, and then maybe I tap if I have to, to try and get another taunt. But I think I'm out of them, actually. <sighs> yep, if that wasn't frozen, this would be an entirely different game, but it is. And I don't have anything in my deck which would make it not frozen. Okay, we need that 3-3. And we don't get it. And that's game. GG. Not even he can miss that lethal. Shame. That, that didn't go well. Today just isn't going well in general, honestly. <laughs> 
surprisingly and disappointingly, I've got to say, because this deck has been a lot of fun up to this point, but I'm running into a wall today. I've actually lost more today with this deck than I have any other day playing it. Hmm. Ah, oh, that was... I think even if I got the 3-3, I was probably toast anyway. I was so low on health. And also, have where the hell is Rivendare in all of this? I have to ask that. Where did Rivendare go? I need Rivendare. This is an awful opening hand. Wow. Can't pull off too many of the cool combos without Rivendare being there. Thanks for the egg. I don't have a way to play it. So I'm told that hunters are infesting the ladder at the moment. I assume because web spin is pretty good and there's a lot of random nonsense with that. Oh, a web spinner. Big sodding surprise. All right. Okay, well, let's just hope he doesn't draw anything amazing out of it. Probably will. Zombie Chow and a Ruby and Egg. Well, Zombie Chow actually does something, so we're going to play Zombie Chow. We don't have a way to trigger the egg yet. And then we can kill the web spinner with that, so that's good. But he does draw a random beast anyway. Of course, he'll go for the face, because that's optimal. There we go, yep. Yeah. We'll just play the Harvest Golem next turn, I think. We'll, we'll hold on to the Ruby and Egg until we have the Abomination out on the board, and then we can guarantee that it'll work. There we go. That's fine. That's a decent enough start. Of course, we don't know what he drew, but hopefully it's just bad. <laughs> Is it just the terrible beast? Could very well be. But, I mean, this is a decent enough start. Random animal. It's a huffer. All right. That's actually, I think, the worst creature he could have got here. The bear would have been brilliant, but as it stands, Zombie Chow trades right into it and does so without actually healing him, which is great. But I have taken some damage, so I need to watch out for that. Death Lord might be good here. Yeah, I think it is. Let's, we're just going to Death Lord. Just in case he has any more aggro nonsense available. Okay. And then we, we have the egg and the abomination. I think it's probably just Fugin next turn. I don't want to really play multiple taunts. It's weird to have all three of the kind of taunts available to me. So it's probably going to be Fugin. Alright, let's see what he comes up with. Does he have a deadly shot? And if he does, does he want to roll the dice on the 50-50? That's a good question, isn't it? What do you have? Starving Buzzard into... Into what? Unleash? Coin Unleash? What's he got? Okay. If he's using one of his silencers on a Harvest Golem, then he doesn't know what this deck is. So that is very good for me. Not only that, but I still get preferential trades out of this anyway. He has a boar. Which again, it gets him a card, but I mean, his entire board is going to die. Also, his deck is apparently entirely made of gold, so... Alright, well, he trades the ball for something else. I play Fugin. There we go. And then we just eat the rest of his stuff. So, I mean, that's good. I have... I still have a very strong board, and I now have Fugin on it. The Death Lord will eventually die, obviously, and it's gonna give him something. I've considered adding the way... Because of the Death Lord and things like Zombie Char, I have considered adding the Wailing Soul in. And I think I might at some point. And he gets Stranglethorn Tiger. That's a pretty good draw. Is So the nonsense continues, I'm afraid. Okay. I think it's gonna be Abomination here, isn't it? Yeah. Abomination is, I think, really the only reliable way. And that's gonna die anyway, so I might as well trade it and keep my Fugan at maximum. Yep. That should protect me from the Tiger, at least, so... But he got that for free, so he's probably not too worried about it. At least it's going to be quite difficult to dislodge that. He does, probably doesn't want to... Oh, he's going to deadly shot. Oh, no! Hit the... F Come on! Hit the Fugan! Now he's going to trade that into the Fugan if he hasn't... Well, actually, whoa. He's just going to hit me in the face for five. Ah! RNG betrays me really badly today. My luck is disgusting. Hunter's Mark... What's your follow-up? A boar? Animal Companion. What? Okay, well, I'm gonna hit it for six, so that sucks, but... I'm just- I'm not really sure what was the Hunter's Mark all about. Huh. Okay. Well, whatever. 
Still no sign of Riven there. He's nowhere to be seen right now. Okay. That's that. We certainly need to protect ourselves. And we're going to do that with a sludge belcher. I'm thinking... Hmm. Uh, I think loot hoarder. Nerubian. I don't know. Actually, the egg with power overwhelming might have been really good. I probably should have done that. Played the egg and then power overwhelming the next turn to maybe kill the Leok. Because he probably isn't going to throw the Leok at that. He might. But he also has an animal out. So if he has a second kill command, then that's gone. Obviously, I don't want to be dumping too much on the board as well because I've unleashed the hounds. Yep, I'm absolutely thinking that I should have done that. I can still go Power Overwhelming on the Gnome. Oh, all there's that. Okay, so that's his second Hunter's Mark. That's gone. Good. Good to know. Well, I don't even need to Power Overwhelming now. But I'm still worried about this. Thing is, I have Taunt. So, unless he can kill that, and he's used a lot already, I think I should be alright. So, we can just do the Nerubian Egg and go into the Power Overwhelming after that. Unless we get a better draw, which we don't. Okay, so we'll play the Egg. And I guess we'll play the Dancing Swords as well. I don't want to play any more because of the... There's actually still a fairly severe risk because I played that many that he has unleashed the Hounds. Which actually makes me a bit more willing to just play more stuff. Yeah, let's play one more. Because Unleash the Hounds is enough to knock down that taunt anyway, so he goes to the face for five. I think he's just trying to kill me right now. So if he has Unleashed the Hounds, it was going to happen regardless. If he doesn't... What do you got? Wait, you got an arcane shot? What do you have? Oh, he, he, I think he just wants to break it so he can hit me in the face for five so he can put me on a timer. Gadgetan followed by an arcane shot. Yep. And he's got a gadget sand, which is not good. So I assume he's going to go for face now. He's got me down pretty low. You see, I haven't really seen too many hunters doing that, but I've, I've heard a lot of complaints about Flare, especially, you know, it's just a very, very good card in general. Well, and he's going to go for the face. Okay. Yeah, this is not brilliant. We can try to come back, though. We will have Stalig. He's used his... Uh, he probably has a second deadly shot. He might have a big game hunter as well. God, so many variables. Okay. And I don't quite have what I need to kill that. I'm going to have to throw the rest of it at it. Don't like that. But such is the way I think. I mean, I could just power over one the Stalag, but if he has big game Hunter, then it just goes down immediately. I want to play the Stalag anyway. It would have guaranteed the Thaddeus. Mm. Was that the right move? I think it is. Because it, it clears the board faster. So I think it is the right move. It gets us the 4-4 as well. It gives him a card. I don't like that, but it is what it is. I think we're just going to have to not life tap at this point because I'm. Uh, that would put me three turns away from death. And that's assuming he doesn't have another kill command. Did he use both? Oh, he... Is that from the web spinner? Oh, bloody hell. You can't be serious. That's why people hate that card. Uh, you cannot account for the variables that that card gives you. It's like, oh, well, you know, he's not running King Crush. Well, no, he's not, but he's running a web spinner, so he might have it anyway. <sighs> Bloody hell, I hate that card. <sighs> Man, that is really frustrating. He clearly was not running that. That came from the web spinner. King Crush, yeah. Yeah. We were establishing some semblance of board control, but today is a really bad day for RNG. I'm almost tempted to take the Death Lords out of the deck because of what Death Lords have been doing to me lately. They've been doing so much damage to me, it's almost like it's not worth it. Alright, Kel'Thuzad is lovely and all, but I might not even get to play him, so we're gonna toss it. Alright, we have Power Overwhelming Nerubian Egg. We'll probably coin the ruby and egg on the basis of having that. Because that gets us a... It gets us a kill on something. I don't know, zombie chow. Zombie chow, especially against a priest that likes to heal itself. Especially. Hmm. Yeah, let's hold on. Let's hold on to turn two and then try go for the turn three power overwhelming. Because we might get a better trade out of that. It's like, okay, I, I have a four damage thing and you have only like a two drop minion that was not going to have enough health. Yeah, zombie, zombie chow first. 
Nerubian Egg turn two. With power overwhelming, turn three is an option. That seems good. I can make that work. Don't know what I'm going to do with the coin, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. It's a really weird hand, actually. That's not a curve as it is a flat line. Well, I mean, it gets us... Starlig is not brilliant against a priest for fairly obvious Shadow of Death reasons. And you might think, oh, but you want it dead, right? You want it dead. Yes, and also no, because really you want Starlig to trade to die. You know, because that trades for almost anything in the game. It hits like a truck. But you rarely ever have that happen, because killing Starlig is not hard. It only has four health. It's very easy to take out and do so efficiently. But the plus side of that is that if he uses it a Shadow of Death on Starlig, he's not maybe not got one for a big Void Terror later on. Or, of course, Thaddeus. Uh, that's that's the downside of it. It's like, oh, I've burnt half of the ways that I have to deal with Thaddeus. Of course, there are other things like Big Game Hunter and maybe you pull your second Shadow of Death. All right, yep. Yeah, uh, I think we... I don't know. Coin Dancing Swords isn't bad either, especially against a priest. Okay, yeah, we'll go to Coin Dancing Swords. It's, just, it's too good to pass up. It really is. And we still have Nerubian Egg Power Overwhelming as an option. And it, it kind of delays the Starlig coming out. But do we really want the Starlig out so early? Unless we get Fugan, it's ultimately quite pointless. Because it's not going to trade for something well, you know? You want it to trade for something big and scary. You don't want it to trade for a Yeti. Or even something else with, you know, four attack. I'm trying to think of what else it would trade for. Yeah, actually not too many great options, but... All right, well... This is a this is a pretty good opening board, you know? We're on turn three now. I have a 2-3 and a 4-4 four, four on the board. Both of them, of course, dying will benefit him. But again, he's a priest. That's the cool thing. He can just kind of heal himself, and then the zombie chow doesn't really... You know, the effect isn't really there. Okay, yeah, we're going to go with that. And we'll plump down the Lepinone because we can. There we go. This is a good start. This is a very good start. I mean, he could still absolutely ruin everything, but it would take a little while to do so. And we have the power overwhelming, so... I don't know if he'd even want to play something big. He has to, I suppose, doesn't he? I'm trying to think. I mean, if he drops a Sengen Shield Master here, then I trade badly. Although in that situation, I'd even be tempted just to power overwhelming the bloody gnome and kill it that way, but... I don't know. I still would prefer to trade this with something good, and he's not going to drop something like that, is he? I'm trying to think, like, is there any four health taunt? And I don't think... Yes, there's things like the Abomination, but I think he's in a pretty tricky spot, honestly. I don't think there's actually that much he can really do against a board like this yet. Okay, Dark Cultist plus what? Power Word Shield? Okay. Alright, well that's great for me, because I can use my Power Overwhelming trick now, and then I can just run the Lepinome into it. That's pretty good on all counts, and he doesn't get the Death Rattle benefit either, so... How could you possibly complain? Nice. And we can we can very easily and safely life tap here as well. Very cool. Alright. This deck is finally playing the way that it's supposed to. There we go. And there's an even scarier board for you. And you're down to half health as well. So let's see what you got. Zombie Chow will help him out a bit. He's probably got a way to kill that now. But that's a strong scary board. Do I have lethal next turn actually? No. I'm like two off. That's assuming he doesn't kill something. So I was going to say, oh, let's go Power Overwhelming. And then just kill him. But that's what, 10, 14. Yeah, not quite enough. Sludge Belcher. All right, well, we could use our other Power Overwhelming here with the Zombie Chow to kill it if we want. Ooh, Void Terror. Mmm. Mmm, Void Terror. Okay. That's delicious. Very delicious. To efficiently kill it, we need to Power Overwhelming. The problem is the zombie chow's in the middle. I would use the zombie chow for this, but he's in the middle, which means that Void Terror is going to eat something else, and I actually don't want him to do that. Mm. That's actually really annoying. Cons <laughs> to be fair, I didn't really think about it that way, but yeah, that actually is a bad, bad thing. <laughs> I don't really want to eat either of them. The alternative is to just fight the bloody thing. I think maybe we just fight the bloody thing and then play Stalig. 
yeah, I guess. I don't like fighting the thing. You know, this is very, very efficient for him. He's probably very happy with this result. I, ra I just ran my whole board into it. And he got healed as well, which is even better, you know. So any kind of aggression I was able to put on there. I right, we do still, if he, if the Starlink somehow lives through this turn, then Voitara is going to be incredible. But I don't know if it will. It's a priest. He's probably got a million and one ways to kill it. If he doesn't... Oh, please, no, how can he sell Priest Circle of Healing combo? He doesn't have it. No, he might. It's a zero mana combo. He doesn't have it! Oh. Oh, I'm so happy. Fantastic. All right, we have an incredible show for you tonight. Or do we? I don't know. Do I want to kill the Alchemy, or do I want to face damage? I mean, that's a lot of face damage. Hmm. I think we have to kill... To, that's very greedy if we go for the face, isn't it? So I can do 11... I can do 15 damage this turn and drop an Abomination. If I ignore the Alchemy Soul Priest. Which is not a good idea. Because if he pulls Circle of Healing, my whole board blows up. I've... Yeah, I think we we just kill it. Get it out of the way. And probably put down Abomination. Yeah. Okay. And if we do that and he kills the Starleg, I'm still happy with what the Starleg's done. So, and then of course I get one part of the Thaddeus combo. It's weird. It's like, he's got to have Shadow of Death in there somewhere. He mustn't have drawn it yet. I don't know, even with the Death Rattle, I would still have Shadow of Death Starling. It's it's too dangerous to leave up. It does so much damage. He's probably got a way to kill it this turn, though. But I'm, again, I'm still happy with his performance, so what's there to complain about? I still have some solid four, four, fours on the board, which you can't touch. So that's nice. If that if that remains alive, that's getting power overwhelming Void Terror immediately. To be fair, if that stays alive, I've got lethal, haven't I? Unless he heals himself. You know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, with power overwhelming, he's dead unless he handles this. He's got to have a way to kill Starlink, surely. If he doesn't, he is in so much trouble. It's definitely... This has been a, a weird session, actually. The Death Rattle deck hasn't really played the way that I expected. I think it's mostly because I have never drawn Rivendare for some reason. All right. Okay, he's playing hyper defensively. I will be more than happy to make mincemeat out of that. Is someone uh. injured? Okay, the ruby and egg. It's nice. Okay, best way to handle this. So, if we run the Starlig in there, it gets rid of that. It leaves him with one of those. So, we're going to get through that, which yeah, is very, very annoying. I could do the power overwhelming thing and then eat. That would create a massive creature, but if he does draw Shadow Word Death, I've invested a lot for nothing. The safer play, I think, is Nerubian Egg. And just whack it, basically, and clear his board. It's so good, though. It's really tempting. Really tempting. Do we live a little? I think we live a little. You know, what are the chances that he has Shadow of Death on his next draw? What are the chances? Very, very minimal, I think. And we can also pull a little something like this. I mean, that is, that's scary right there. That is a terrifying thing to have happen to you. Look at that thing. It's a 14-7. It's a beast. It's a goddamn monstrosity. Does he have a way to kill it? Does he have a way to kill it? He has a way to kill it. He top decked Shadow Word Death. Of course he did! Of course he did! <laughs> Why am I even surprised at this point? Of course he top decked a Shadow Word Death. What else would he have got? In the 17 cards that he had remaining. Yes, a Shadow Word Death. You bastard. All right, this is personal now. And he inexplicably did not heal that. Did he heal himself? Oh, I suppose he did. All right. This means war. 
It's always against priests that I get the really amazing Void Terror combo. And then, after I'm convinced they don't have a Shadow Word Death, they pull one off the top of the deck. Mm. I've still got a much better board than him. Because he doesn't have anything! So that's pretty good. I'm a little bit concerned about mind control, though. So, it's getting to turn 10. But again, I ha- Well, I actually don't have lethal. I do if I blow up my own abomination. I've got that. That would be pretty sick. Let's see if he can come up with an answer. Man, he's got six cards and a heal and nine mana. He's got to have something he can do. Surely. He may have his other Shadow Word Death. He is... And that came off the top of his deck as well, didn't it? Yep, it did. Is that his other Shadow Word Death? We... We've got to build the most gargantuan evil beast. Well, you know what would be lovely here? If he Shadow of Death's that, and I pull Fugan. That is... That would be excellent. He would have no answer. Well, he might. He might have Big Game Hunter, but mostly no answer. Limited answers. Oh, but he would have mind control, and I'd probably lose. <laughs> That's what's going to happen, because priests. you got to play something. That's something. Okay. All right. What can we do? What can we do? They are coming for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could blow up both abominations, which would be a stupid idea because it would kill that. We don't want to do that. We can run the Sylvanas in, which will kill that and then give us a creature. We still we can't kill him this turn as a result of this. Or can we? What happens if we blow up both abominations? Will I have the DPS to kill him? I don't think so. If I go through that, so what? Four. This is the five, so that would be nine. Uh, oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think I might. I think I'm no, because then that dies. No. Yes. Possibly. All right. If I run that, if I run this into this. Both explode. He takes four damage, so that's down to, what, seven? And then... Yes! Yes, I do have lethal. I do. I think. I'm hope, I hope I'm right on this. My calculation is correct here, right? Yes! Yeah. Ah! Oh, the style points! It's here! It's real! Yes! Yeah! Oh, you don't get much better than that. That's what you get for killing the last one. Ah, that was satisfying. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That was a good way to end the show. There we go. It's a, that's a fun deck. That's a very fun deck. I'm still considering maybe putting Wailing Soul into it. I don't know what I would change, though, if I was going to alter anything. I am strongly considering taking the Death Lords out, be just because of the horrible RNG that I've suffered at the hands of them. Admittedly, if I do take the Death Lords out, then I have less reason to put Wailing Soul in. This is Wailing Soul, by the way, if you don't know. It's a 3-5, silence your other minions, yeah? So, there are only certain circumstances where this is good, for obvious reasons. Wailing Soul is actually an ideal card to put in a deck that uses a lot of the negative Death Rattles, but doesn't use a lot of the positives. It's fantastic. It makes running those cards significantly less risky. It would still be good for Zombie Chow. It would still be good for Dancing Swords. It's potentially, in some situations, good for Abomination. It's not good for anything else, really. So, if I took the Death Lords out, Wailing Soul would actually be significantly less useful. It would defeat the point of it. Is there anything else I could take out of it? Uh, I don't know. You can maybe you could maybe argue for the removal of the leper gnomes, possibly. Although that does get rid of a lot of the early game sting of it. Plus, it's you know kind of ruins the theme a little bit. The undertakers are almost essential in a deck like this. I don't know if you could. I mean, maybe you can justify taking the loot hoarders out. Uh, I mean, that leaves you with only one two drop. Yeah, hard to say. I don't think. Yeah, I, I think you you just kind of live with it. I'm still thinking of removing the Death Lord for something else. If you want to see what else is available in Death Rattle, you can put Void Caller in, which is ultimately not very useful because the only demon I run is Void Terror. 
So this actually ends up summoning a 3-3 Void Terror, which is bad. So I would not in any way want to run that. Other death rattles that I don't run are Thalnos, for obvious reasons. I don't have spells, so it's not that good. Mad Scientist, again, because it's a warlock, you don't have secrets. I don't run Haunted Creeper. I could maybe justify taking out Death Lords and running Haunted Creepers for a little bit extra punch at the start. That There's also, of course, Unstable Ghoul. I don't like it in this deck because there's too many of these. I mean, there's a couple of one health minions, and obviously like there's the Harvest Golem token, there's the Loot Hoarder, there's the Lepanome. And of course, you can also blow up your own zombie chow with this if you're not careful. And I think that the taunts I've got are pretty strong. This would be good against maybe a Murloc or aggro deck, but outside of that, I think it's actually not beneficial. And that's it, oh, aside from the Beast and Deathwing. I am very tempted to run Deathwing in this deck. Very tempted. I have thought about it, and I might. No. I think maybe I run a few more games with the Death Lord and see whether or not it keeps screwing me over. And if it does, maybe I just take that out. I'm even thinking about just getting the Beast and Deathwing. Uh, the Beast is not brilliant, though. It's The stat line is kind of dodgy on it. But Deathwing, I think, for this deck is potentially fantastic. I mean, think about it for a second. You pull Fugan and Starleg, you got them on the board, and then you Deathwing. So you blow up your Fugan and Starleg. You have a 12-12 and 11-11 on the board, and their board is wiped. That's terrifying. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I th certainly think there's some alterations here, but I'm going to put this up on half pwn so you can have a look at it and then you can see what changes you want to make. As I say, I've got to rank 14 with this so far. I think I can go higher. I've had a, a bad run of games today, but I think I can go much higher with it. So I will show you another video of this because, frankly, I've had some fairly disappointing games. No Kel'Thuzad. Never pulling Rivendare in all of these games is just silly. I don't know how on earth that ended up happening, but there you go. Ah, my name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.